Hi, Elaine here. Today, I'll be sharing how to create metal style text and nameplates for your digital planners. I'm still using that same file that we've been using for the last few videos looking at planners. This time, I am not going to need certain parts of it, but I am going to need the original leather cover. Zooming into the top half of that, and the first thing I'm going to do is to create some text and apply a metal style to it. Using the artistic text tool and clicking, and I'll just add my name. Now for this to work when it's just text on its own, it could do with being quite a chunky font. And there is a perfect font that I have installed for this, and I am making no attempt whatsoever to pronounce it, but it's this one here. And as you can see, it's very chunky. An alternative to this font would be Impact, but this one works quite nicely. Now, at the moment, you can see that the text has an orange fill. That really doesn't matter because what we're going to do is apply a bitmap texture to it. So over to the gradient tool and then up to the context sensitive toolbar where you can choose the type. Initially, it's set to solid, but bitmap is the option at the bottom and that's the one we need. Links to all of the textures are available in the description and I'm going to choose the first one, which is gold. And while that does have a metal texture and we can edit that, making it bigger, making it smaller, rotating it, the problem is it's very difficult to see on top of the leather background and it does look like it's just floating there. So we need to add some effects to that. Moving that so we can see it better, the effect I'm going to add is a 3D effect. Automatically, it starts looking better. It's got a little bit of a shadow behind it, which lifts it off the leather, but not quite enough. So I'm going to go in there and change five to 10. In addition to that, I'm going to add a bevel and emboss effect, and I'll change that from five down to three. And you have embossed metal text. What I would do at that point in order for me to be able to easily reuse it is go to my styles and from the burger menu, choose to add the, a style from the selection. In there, not helpful, style one, I would name that embossed gold text. And that would enable me to repurpose that as required. So if I were to add something else like back to school, you can see, as ever, Affinity Publisher remembers the fill, but not the effects. Easiest way to apply that is just to click the object style and you're sorted. Now, the second thing I'm going to do is add a nameplate. So we don't need to see these anymore. To start with a nameplate, all I need is a rectangle. So getting the rectangle tool and drawing out space for a nameplate. Notice it's remembered the previous fill, which was when I was doing pattern covers. For this one, let's start with just plain white and move it into the center. You can have that as big or as small as you like. Let's leave it quite large. One of the easiest ways to get this to look more like a nameplate is to change the corners. Now, yes, we have different shapes available to us. But with a simple rectangle, we can still impact the shape of it using the corner options. So there are five corner types. Initially, it's set to none. And then there's rounded, straight, concave and cut out. So rounded gives us rounded corners as if it were a rounded rectangle. Straight gives us cut off corners on a diagonal. Then we have concave, which does look quite nice if a little big. And the last one we have is cut out. Now, I think concave looks best, but certainly not at 25%. So in there, if I click in there and change that to 14%, it just alters those corners enough for it to look more like a nameplate than a rectangle slapped on top of it. You could if you wanted to, and I don't think for this purpose it would add anything to it, but you could alter the radius. Instead of having a single radius, you can go into here and having taken the tick out of single radius, you are able to change those corners if you wanted to. So if you wanted to have something quite quirky like that, you could do. 
I'm going to change that back to single radius. Now, at that point, I've lost the concaveness, even though I have actually still got that applied. And that's because the last setting I used was to pull it right out so it was square. If I go back into there, you can see I cannot apply that. So I'm going to undo and take it back to there and tell it I want a single radius. OK, that's the background of our nameplate set. Next thing to do is to add some effects to it. So bring up the effects panel. First thing I'm going to do is add a bevel and emboss. At five pixels, you can barely see that. But if I change that to 12, that looks much better. Second effect I'm going to apply is the 3D effect. Initially, that is set to five. I'm just going to tweak that fractionally and set it to six. So it's a little bit bigger. The styles look great, but the fill isn't right on that. It's just plain white. So back to the gradient tool and choosing a bitmap. I used gold the first time. I have gold and silver and an alternative, but we'll start with the same gold as we used on the text. And again, in here, you are able to scale it. You are able to rotate it. But notice. This image I'm using is not a pattern. So there is a line on the left hand side and a line on the right hand side where you can see the edges of it. So for this one, I'd be looking to drag it out so it was quite large and I could rotate it if I wanted to. But that doesn't look bad straight, so I'll leave it straight. Next thing to do is to add some text over the top of that. So I'll put my name again. Now, this time, I don't think this font looks great on there like that. Not when it has a background. So a better font I found is Big Caslan. And then I just need to scale that down so it fits the nameplate. As we know, it uses the fill it already has. But the problem is it doesn't look like it's embossed on there or engraved into it or anything like that. I'm just going to change the colour of that to part of the gold. So I would use this, move across and pick a colour from here so it matches better like that. Still doesn't look embossed, though. That's because we need to add some effects to it, starting with a 3D effect. Now, the default 3D effect makes it look as though it's standing out from the gold. If I change that from five pixels to 10 pixels, it stands out even better and looks more rounded. And making changes in here completely changes how this looks. There's two ways that I've changed it. In the profile, if we click that, you have some available standard profiles at the bottom. And applying these changes how that text looks. The straight one makes it look very sharp. Then there's a rounded one, there's a concave one, and there's that last one. And you can edit these. You're not limited to these standard ones. You can do all kinds of quirky things, like moving the points. So that's the first thing that I did. The second thing which makes a massive difference is the direction of the light. Initially, there's a single light source. You can add more if you need. But all I'm going to do is move this round. And as I move it round, instead of that looking as though it's standing out from the metal, now it looks like it's engraved into the metal. And moving the light changes that. Now that looks much darker. If I move it back to the left, it looks much lighter. So I like that around just past the, the 90 degree mark. So it looks engraved into that metal. At this point, I have two very differently formatted elements. I have the nameplate in the background and I have the name at the front. So a good thing to do to be able to repurpose these is to go back to the styles and add both of them. So this first one, add style from selection, is the actual text. So I'll name that engraved text. And then I'll select the background and add that as a style. And rename that to nameplate. Now, you might be thinking that's all very well, but what if I wanted it silver or a different color? And that's very simple. So with my nameplate selected, I am going back to my gradient tool. I'm going back to bitmap. 
and I'm going to choose a different texture. So this time a silver texture. That's the background changed. Uh, this time I will rotate that slightly. But now the engraving on it looks like it's the wrong colour because we applied a fill that was from the gold texture. We could select a grey from the new fill or we could just select a grey colour and that looks like it matches. You can, because there is a greys palette, go through these. If you made it much darker, it would stand out more. Take it right down and you can see it's much lighter. Very, very different effects. So just go through these and choose the one that matches the look that you are looking for. And then, of course, there's the final step for repurposing. Notice I called it engraved text. Hmm, I should have put gold engraved text, shouldn't I? But I'll add this for the name. So this again is the engraved text, but this time it's silver. Then select the nameplate and do exactly the same. So add star from selection, right click and rename nameplate silver. And that is how to create and use metal textures for adorning the covers of your digital planner. So let's have a quick recap. I created two very different styles. One was metal text and the other was the nameplate. For the metal text, choose a chunky font. It works better. Then you need to add a bitmap fill using the gradient tool, apply a 3D effect and apply a bevel and emboss effect. For the nameplate, I added a simple rectangle, changed the corners to concave at 14 pixels, added a bevel and emboss effect, added a 3D effect and then used a bitmap fill. The font I used was Big Caslin for that one. I added a single effect to that, which was 3D, but I did change the profile and I also changed the light source. And finally, using exactly the same shapes, I changed it from gold to silver. And bonus for the future, I created object styles for each of those different looks. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com slash VIP. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss future tutorials. And if you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and see you next time. <laughs>